Hi, if you're new to the channel, I'm Steve. Oh, Stevie. Owner of Ho Stevie. This is our surf shop in San Diego, and we have the biggest surf brand on Amazon. I'm here today because my lunch tray surfboard has been retired. If you've been following me for a while, you might have seen the video of shaping the lunch tray. That board lasted four years, and it's the board that I rode the most. Unfortunately, uh, the nose got damaged again, and now it's on display at the surf shop. I found a company up in Oceanside, Whitlock Surf Factory, that said I can film the entire board building process. You also might remember a couple years ago, I made a fish surfboard in a friend's garage. And while that board was rideable, it wasn't pretty. So this time, let's see how the professionals make a surfboard. All right, we're ready. This is the Aku machine. The new future of surfing is and the machines and what we can take 50 years of my dad's knowledge and put it in a machine and it gets it done a lot quicker and faster. So that cuts it instead of a uh, Instead of a hand handshake. Cutting. So once it is done with the machine, it comes back over to this room. This is what a machine plank looks like. Nice. So we're going to be finishing a board like this. Still takes, you know, depending on who's doing it, 15, 30 minutes an hour if you really want to tinker. Um, once it's done from there, it goes this way. I have a Santa's little elves up here. Working away. Yeah, so this is what we do all our passing. Hi. This is Steve, Tommy, this is Steve. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. you guys were like the one of the only places that let people come in. Because I, I was thinking about doing it myself. And Rusty said, like, I could come in, you guys would teach me everything or whatever, walk me through it. And then, yeah, I was like, I'll just rather have you guys do it for me. Yeah, but it's, it's tough finding a place that will, like, let you come in. This is my fin room, and then that's the dirty sanding room in there. Okay. So, the next time you ask a guy for a discount on a board, stand in that room for 10 minutes. <laughs> tell me. You'll pay him freaking double. So, what kind of board are we building at? Something like a lost bean bag, so really short, wide. Fat nose, fat tail. Catch a lot of waves. I know what that one looks like. So this is the program that cuts it. This is the design program. This tells me how many cuts and how many passes and how fast I'm going to cut the board. It already says Steve on it, so. It's ready. <laughs> the thick boy. Yes, it is. But once it all mills out, well, that's going to be a lot smaller. We'll chop this thing up. Yeah. Churchill Blanks is right here, made here in Oceanside, uh, Escondido. So local guys, local business. So yeah, so that's gonna be a pretty wide nose up in there. What's the tape for? Just kind of helps the suction bond a little bit better. Okay, let's turn on some laser beams. This is when it gets a little bit loud. That was fast. Yeah, that's so cool, that's so bad. So that was, uh, that machine did most of the cutting, shaping, whatever. Rusty's gonna finish fine tuning it. We got a little confusion with the tools, so he's gonna do a little bit of it now and then a little bit of it off camera. A lot of times in the very beginning, first cut of board, there's adjustments that you know like you'll, you'll come off the machine and this looks pretty good this looks like yeah good. this one looks like it went smooth and so a lot of times they come in they've got thick or something and on one side so we'll kind of reshape it mm -hmm. but make notes of what we did and put it on the paperwork and then they'll they'll make that adjustment in the computer gotcha i'm going to start by just getting familiar with the board i'm going to do it the old-fashioned way with this here and right now i'm just trying to get become one with the the phone, right? One with the board. So now I've kind of gotten to know the board a little bit. Just playing around, so I'm going to try to 
tune in the nose and tail. For me, the easiest thing is using a grinder. And a barber, when you're getting your hair done, uh -huh. which I haven't done for a while, <laughs> you know, they come out these, when you're all done and they're finished, they come out with these like real razor blades uh -huh. stuff, and tune in the last part. That's kind of what this is, I'm doing the final touches. Twice and cut it once. Yeah, that's what they say. <laughs> Oops. No, I'm just no. kidding. <laughs> did you order 5-1? Is it? Or did you order 5-4? 5-4. <laughs> <laughs> Second one got me. Yeah. <laughs> Day two. All right, it's a new day. I just got up here, it's like 8.30. Gonna be the first board that Tommy works on today. This is like the weight of, or how strong it is. You're dealing with, I think, this is two pound EPS, as far as the foam, you're, you know, you're, you're blank. To me, you know, it, you can go all four ounce, but there's a board in here that's buckled already because it's super light. Yeah. You gotta put some, they're already gonna be light. You gotta put some glass on it. So yeah. A guy your size, I would do, a six bottom and a four six deck or all six and it's going to be there forever for you yeah i want something that's going to last a long time let's do double six and it'll be strong yeah it'll still be light and since this is a black light i'm going to use some nice little cheater things In about two hours, I'm gonna leave it in the heat room for you know a little while to cook, and then I'll be able to trim it, the tape line. So I probably won't be here for that. You're gonna do that? Okay, so yeah, I'll come back for the deck. Day three. I'm back for the second glassing session today. We're gonna glass the top of the surfboard. All these little stuff that went through the paper would matter. So we wouldn't want any jagged cut lines or anything. Because you're doing an opaque over it, yeah. it's the bottom cut lap that's actually the most important one, not this one. Okay. So, board looks great. I gotta get out of here. Tommy's gonna do some things when I'm not gonna be here to film, because there's a few more steps. You wanna hash those out again really quick. Later on, afternoon, 
we're gonna go ahead and flip it over and we're gonna trim that lap, flip it back over and hot coat it. So hot coat is just uh, another layer of resin without the fiberglass cloth. Correct, we'll put the we'll route out for the fin boxes, we'll set the fin boxes, those got a kick, we're gonna put patches over the fin boxes since this is color work, then we can hot coat the bottom, then we can sand it, and then you can have it. Okay, so I'm gonna come back for the sanding, I'll show you guys the sanding. All that other magic's gonna happen behind the scenes, and uh, we'll see you for the finished product. Day four. What did you do since last time? So you got a leash cut, hot coated it, you got the logos put on, they go on afterwards, hot coat the bottom. Boxes put in. Boxes all put in pretty. Now we're gonna, we're gonna bring it back to life. This is the death room. Oh God. So it doesn't really take this many pads. I have one machine. I don't have multi machines to keep all the pads on them, so I just switch them. On these epoxies, I like to break just to break the shine. 100 grit, hard pad. From there, we're gonna switch over to 220 on a medium pad. We're gonna take that 220 off and put the 320 on to give it a nice finish. We're gonna do the rails with the homemade Tommy pad. Real cushiony and wraps around the rail real nice. And then we're gonna finish it off and give it a nice matte finish. Scotch Bright did. I also make these. Everybody does it a million ways to skin a cat. This is the way I do it. I'll do this by hand. Take one where you can see where it's so shiny. Block doesn't lie. Coder's job to take the tape out so the sander doesn't have to do this. He cuts it out before uh, before you pull sand. right when right right when the hot coat's getting you know going off. Uh, you pull them. They, they just come out way cleaner, much nicer finish. ourselves a real surfboard. Yeah, it feels like a real surfboard. Not like the one that I made myself. Oceanside, California. RW Shapes. Finished by Tommy Daniels. Tommy the Magician. Alright, let's go cool. wipe it down. Cool. Big difference uh, between this board and the one that I shaped myself and glassed myself. This is the real deal. Came out good, man. I'm stoked. All right, tip of the day. When you're traveling and you take all your fins out, you got multiple boards in your bag. Screw your screws in so your screws don't f up the board that it's touching. After you take your fins out to put your boards in your bag, make sure you screw the screws back down so you don't mess your other board up because it's no fun opening up a travel bag when you get to your destination and needing ding repair. Smart. All right, so that was great. I'm having legit people make the board for me. That's how you really get it done. If you're in San Diego, come check out Whitlock Surf Factory. Have Tommy make you a board and it'll be good. Let's go ride it. All right, now we're gonna go to the host TV surf shop in PB and pick out traction pad, leash, and fins for the juice box. Willie. Is that the new board? Yeah. So, need to get some fins. This has the five fin option. I'm gonna start it off as a thruster, cause that's probably what I like. And then if I wanna go to a quad, I can. I like the stripe ones, but since the board is already crazy, I wanna get the, the plain black ones. Here we go. 
And whenever you buy the thrusters or quads from our shop, you'll get the screws and the fin key wax comb. We already got the screws in the board, so we don't need those, but uh, yeah, it comes with everything you need. All right, well, the memory card on my camera was full, so we're just gonna do this quick on the phone. I think I'm gonna pick the uh, black palm tree. I don't know, one of these. I like the palm trees for the traction. Also not gonna do the front traction. I have it on my fish. I, th I like it when the board is black, the traction's black. It's all personal preference. We're gonna go with wax on the front of this one and then a rear pad. I'm leaning towards the white palm trees. We'll see. Looks like our six foot leashes are sold out. So I have one at the house that I'll use. So let's go set up the board and surf it. white leash off my fish until we get more of these restocked. I forgot to pick up the host DV wax at the shop, but we got this little mixed bag. We'll throw some of this on and go shred. Host DV wetsuits coming soon. Got a few waves on it, and I like it. I can't remember if I told you this yet, but um, the name is gonna be the Juice Box. So this board is right in between my lunch tray and my fish. I definitely notice it's not as nimble as the fish, but not as clunky as the lunch tray. It has a similar outline to the lunch tray, but it's thinner, so a little bit less volume. It's a nice, happy medium. Plenty of foam to catch waves on the smaller days, but it's only 5'6", so still really maneuverable. And I have not tried it with a quad setup yet, but I wanna do that for a future video. Now about the color. I wanted this board to be black, just like the lunch tray and my fish, but then I saw a picture of another board that looked really nice. It was basically black with a little bit of white marbling throughout. I wanted to copy that. It ended up not being that color. It's a lot more grayish and white than black but I still think it looks cool. I think the guys at Whitlock Surf Factory are awesome, and if you're in the Oceanside area looking for a custom board, you can go check them out. Corey, Tommy, Rusty, if you're watching this, thanks for letting me run around your shop with a camera while you guys built the juice box. Everyone else, thanks for watching this project. Hopefully it gives you a better idea how surfboards are made. Hit the like button if you like this video, and subscribe if you wanna see more. I'm excited to surf more with the juice box. I'll see you guys in the next video. Horse TV.